Welcome to a tutorial on GitHub's issues. So the first thing to do is navigate using your web browser to your repository on GitHub. Then select the issues tab. Initially, if this is an empty repository, obviously you won't have any issues, but here is a repository where we have a whole bunch of issues already in existence. So I'll talk about how you're going to use this particular tool in order to maintain a list of bugs, track those bugs, fix those bugs, and then close those issues. So first off, the most important thing is to kind of think about how you're going to start entering these issues. And in this case, the first thing you want to do is be able to find other issues that might be similar or related so that you don't duplicate those issues. So GitHub offers a variety of ways to actually filter and sort and search through your set of issues. Most important one and the one that I use most frequently is here under filters. This is just your standard search box where you can search for keywords. So when I'm about to enter a new bug, the first thing I do is I think of a keyword in the bug that I want to describe that without entering this keyword into the bug description, you would never be able to describe the bug. For example, if the error is that a bridge won't build, the keyword bridge would have to be an element of any other bug description that's identical to this. So I would just search for the word bridge. And that's going to bring up all of the bugs related to the bridge that are currently in the system. Sometimes you'll have to try a couple of different entries. So for example, one person might call it the floor and you'll get these set of bugs. Another person might call it ground and you'll get a different set of bugs. So one of the things you want to think about are what are some of the other similar words that could be used to describe this same bug? Because the key here is we don't want to duplicate a bunch of effort. Before we start entering a bug, I also wanted to show some of the other ways to search for a bug. If you want to find all the bugs that a particular person entered, select the author and then it'll identify all of the bugs that that particular person entered. You can also search or sort through bugs by their label. So for example, here we can look for only critical issues. We could also look for enhancements. In this case, we need to get rid of other labels. So as you select each label, it'll actually perform an and between these different labels. So critical issue and enhancement is unlikely to actually be the same bug. So we'll clear the critical issue label and we'll use only the enhancement label. Same thing happens with authors. All right, so you have to clear those authors. Uh, in this case, projects, if you add different projects in the same repository, you could search for a specific project. Milestones usually correlate to different releases. So in this case, this is our final release. Bugs we're going to wait to fix until then. You can also look for the assignee. So who has been assigned to fix this bug or has anyone been assigned to fix this bug? So you can also select things like assigned to nobody. So what are all the bugs that currently are not being worked on by any individual person? Last but not least is sort. In this case, we can sort by the time that the bug was created, the number of comments that have been added, or when they were updated so that we can see current information on bugs. The next thing we want to do is we want to take a look at how to actually create a new issue. So thankfully, there's this nice, beautiful green button called new issue. So we start there and you get this empty bug report. So the first most important thing is to create a unique title. You don't want to put something that could easily be confused with another bug. You know, so a generic bug like bridge breaks. Well, that's not really going to be very helpful. No one knows what that really means. So add a descriptive title in here. I often use a complete phrase in these titles so that there's a lot of detail in there and it's easy to figure out exactly what it is. Because most of the time when you're looking through the issues, you want to be able to only read the title and know exactly what that bug is. You don't want to have to click into the bug and read the description every single time you're trying to fix it. So you can see these are pretty lengthy titles for the most part. So let's go back to that new issue here. So once you've added in a descriptive title, then in this right box here, you want to add a thorough description. You want to document the actual result, the expected result, and a step-by-step -step process for reproducing it, if you can do that at all. Sometimes you're going to run into a bug that cannot be reproduced, but try to find a way to reproduce it step by step. Also, it's good to include screenshots. What's really cool is you can actually paste a screenshot right into this window. You don't have to save it as a file first. 
That doesn't work with videos, but it does work in this case with images. If you can, mark up that screenshot so that you can identify exactly what's going on. Let me show you a decent bug. All right, so here we have a bug. It has a lengthy title to describe exactly what the bug is. We talk about this is how I produced the bug in the first place, how it might be reproduced. In this case here, I've used a red box to indicate what I visually saw in the game that looked wrong. So you can see here, the miner is standing in the hub working on a bridge. Well, there is no bridge in the hub. You can also see here that the bridge is being built. That's what that little spot is across that chasm. So somebody is working on the bridge and it is being successfully worked on, but the model for the character is here standing somewhere else in the world, well away from said bridge. So this gives you kind of an idea of what type of details you can add. You can drag and drop a video in there. The last thing to do before you exit creating this issue is to give it a label. Depending upon your team, you might have lots of different labels. In this case, because it doesn't prevent the game from moving forward, I've labeled it as a minor issue. Is it visually disruptive? Yes, it is. But it doesn't really prevent the game from moving forward. A critical issue would be something that prevents the game from moving forward. A showstopper is a crash. You'll notice that this team has put together a whole bunch of different labels for different things to make it easy to pull out different types of bugs. All right, so we have a label for art so that the art team can jump in when we know that the bug is purely an art issue. There's no programming involved. We also have a label for sound if it's purely a sound issue or writing if it's purely a writing issue. If there's no programming involved and that's not where this problem came from, we can label it for the team. We can also label it with question, which means the person trying to fix the bug has a question that the original tester needs to take a look at. Fixed, maybe fixed. Um, we have a lot of interesting labels here that we've created in order to communicate more effectively. And those labels are great because they pop up here on your original issues list as colored tags so that you can just scroll down and glance to find the color that you're looking for. If you wanted to see sort of like, you know, well, how many critical issues have we found recently? And in this case here, we found a lot. Most of these last set of bugs here was a set of critical issues. So once you've created an issue, what if you needed to change something? So what if you need to provide more information? Well, you can do that. Thankfully, I'm just gonna pick this first bug here. If you wanted to change the title, you don't like what this title says, you just click that edit button over on the right, and then you can add something, blah, 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 blah. Make sure that you click save when you're done. Otherwise, it won't save those changes, but you can see here, I've now changed that. You can also see that down here at the bottom of the bug, we have a sequence of changes to the bug, so we can see exactly who has added or deleted information or commented. I'm going to go back and delete those changes. You can also edit your main window here, your main description by using the pencil button. Update comment if we wanted to add something. As we begin working on the bug, sometimes we need to have some discussion about this particular bug or get more information. So one of the other things you can do is add a comment down here. And this will allow the discussion on that bug to continue. Last but not least, once the bug has been fixed, you can select this close issue. And then we can close that bug. And that means that it won't show up in the issues list anymore. If we run across it again at some point later on, either it has been reintroduced or it wasn't really solved in the first place, then we can reopen that issue. I'm gonna go ahead and reopen that issue, even though I'm pretty sure that this one's actually fixed. But I certainly didn't go back and test it yet, so who knows. And that's pretty much it for the issues system in GitHub. Thanks for watching.